testing one two three Can you hear that? All right, good evening and welcome to the Arizona Deliverance Center youtubers You're always welcome. We love you. Thank you for tuning in Let's get going To our teaching tonight some of the parables of Jesus for 2019 All right our uh, best seminar of the year is this month. It'll be on the 22nd. We'll have uh, the ladies in the main auditorium and the men in the small sanctuary overflow over there. That's usually our best seminar in terms of the anointing. It's really spectacular. So that's our next free seminar. You can sign up for that on the website. I expanded my radio ministry, and I'm on at these times every day of the week. Seven days a week, and I'm also on uh, the uh, website 24 hours a day. You can get the uh, radio shows there, or you can also go to darkskyradio.com. This is a secular internet radio station, and last week uh, he sent me the numbers. It was over 32,000 people listened to the show last week. So uh, it's starting to crank back up there again so we get that thing going hey Mike, every night oh there's a dot there okay omni dot fm gracias all right uh, if you want to help out the ministry you can do that without spending any money when you buy something on Amazon go to smile Amazon and put in our charity name They'll pay us when you buy something. Good search will do the same if you switch over from Google and surf the web. Same way with Fry's Food Store. If you go in and put in our charity name at Fry's Food Store, they'll pay us if you buy groceries. <clears throat> so you'll have to switch over from Albertsons, the Mormon grocery store, to Fry's, the secular one, in order for us to receive any donations. People shop at fries anyway. So. Tonight's uh, teaching is on our YouTube channel number one, House of Healing AZ. Please remember to send me an email, Mike at HardcoreChristianity.com. I'd be happy to send you this list for self-deliverance. If you're mentally ill or if you're troubled Christian needing deliverance. YouTubers, don't forget that you are going to eventually start up a terror cell in your church. Terrorizing the devil. Speaking of that, last night uh, we terrorized the devil around here. I watched some of it on the video. I mean, that was awesome. Yeah. Tremendous service last night. The donation boxes are on the doors. Thank you for helping us. We had a great year last year. And you can donate on the website. I wrote three books, one on uh, being cured from mental illness, the other one was on uh, divine healing, the other one was on exposing Satan, they're in the bookstore, or you can get them off the website. Uh, Thursday nights, as you know, we discontinued our services, and it turned out to be a fantastic move. We're still fiddling with the thing to see how it's going to go, but last night, if it's any indication... We'll probably keep it that way. We had a room here, and Ron was teaching the people that had mental illnesses. Then Robert was uh, teaching the people that didn't have mental illnesses. And then Rick was in the, a small sanctuary, and uh, apparently there was a, a huge move of the Spirit. I watched some of it on the video. It was quite amazing. Some mentally retarded boy got a huge deliverance. Yeah. Was it, and his mother was here. She did a deliverance. Wow, that was really something. It was all over the room in there. The Holy Ghost was moving. Yeah. You got to remember that uh, teaching, teaching is good and teaching has a place. You have to have good teaching, but teaching alone is a failure. Teaching alone is a failure. You have to have the moving of the Spirit with the teaching. Jesus always had both. It says he had preaching, he had teaching, 
and then he had healing and deliverance they all three go together if you separate them out then you set up a system designed to fail we call them churches <laughs> Calvary Chapel for example is very good with teaching they're excellent at teaching but that system doesn't work you have to have preaching and you have to have the moving of the spirit that's how the system was originally set up okay. so we're teaching the people who are mentally ill and then we're helping them move in the spirit if you just teach you will always end up disappointed because the devil knows all about what you're teaching he's an expert on it and he sucks teaching out of people's minds before they get to the parking lot. Half of the teaching is it disappears. It's phenomenal. But the moving of the spirit, that drives him cuckoo or cocoa puffs. That's what he hates the most. Seeing the teaching alive. Taking the teaching from here to here is dangerous to him that's what he hates Does that makes sense yeah so what we're trying to do is provide teaching some preaching and the moving of the spirit that's our goal thursday night's healing rooms seven o'clock you're gonna love it all right let's go into some practical things for 2019 you'll be reading your Bible this year won't you one Christian said yes the heathens are struggling with a yes but that's okay you're gonna run across some parables of Jesus let's take a look at a couple of these if you don't mind parabola is the Greek word it means an illustration of something he takes a spiritual concept and then he illustrates it with something the listener can relate to parables have caused all kinds of problems in Christianity because people don't know how to interpret them one thing they do is they read through a parable and they take every little detail and spiritualize it which then puts us into a world of hurt and it creates false doctrines they'll read through a parable and they'll say Oh, he mentioned a shoe in a parable. Oh, well, the shoe represents stomping, which represents war, which represents Zingabuna Kanda country in there. And so, therefore, they are going to rise up in war again. And if you take every little thing he says and make a doctrine out of it, you're going to be teaching false doctrines constantly. The purpose of a parable is to provide spiritual information to a person in a very simple form if they are God seekers the other purpose of the parable is to weed out casual seekers of God Jesus said I, to the disciples I talk to you plainly when I talk to you but in them I talk with parables so a parable is almost like a filter to keep out people who are not seriously looking for God. So the parable for a God seeker is someone who will think about it, focus on it, search for the meaning in it, and therefore the Holy Spirit's able to weed out people who are not really interested from the ones that are, which are the ones he's looking for. So Jesus gave a parable. To someone who is not that interested, they're not going to spend any time trying to figure it out. It's very simple, kind of like a crossword puzzle. Yeah, you know, somebody likes words, but they're not that interested in them. So they're not going to sit and do a crossword puzzle. Okay? It's always a, a fictional thing. It's a fictional thing, but sometimes he uses current events and just kind of rewords them. So that the listener is able to relate to it. 
they're not actual events You notice nobody's name is ever used in a parable Okay, the purpose of the parable is to illustrate basically one spiritual truth maybe two and he's keeping it simple but he's also hiding it from people who aren't really interested. Okay? 46 of them. And uh, they're also used prophetically to give people an idea what's going to happen in the future. Parables are really interesting if you, but you got to take a little time to look at them. You can't just skim through them and catch it. You know, there are things God wants you to ponder. Anybody here like to ponder things? <laughs> well, you do? Well, that's great. <clears throat> In order to interpret a parable, you got to be very careful. You need to look when it was given and the circumstances around it. Okay? Or you're going to misinterpret it. And so you have to read the text above and and below okay always look for the main point of the parable there's usually just one one main point he's trying to drive through you got to look at the historical background of the parable you got to look at what he's trying to illustrate he's using a fictional story to illustrate a spiritual truth The details of the parable are not usually important So if you pull a teeny detail out of it and make a doctrine out of it, you're going to end up teaching false doctrine to people It's easy to do you can spiritualize anything That's what the devil does. He nitpicks stuff and he spiritualizes it and all all of a sudden everybody's confused In this kind of thing here, you're trying to Keep it simple, stupid. Voila. All right. Here's a parable for you about the new religion. We went over that in detail in the, at the last seminar about Judaism and how Judaism was replaced by Christianity. The old law was replaced by the new law. Nobody came to the seminar, but what we did at the seminar was I showed the Old Testament laws were removed and replaced by the New Testament ones. Many of the Old Testament laws were carried over into the New Testament laws. So you'll see some carryover there. For example, in the Old Testament, it was a sin to murder somebody. Well, that carried over to the New Testament. It's still a sin to murder someone. But uh, eating a red lobster was a sin. In the Old Testament, in the New Testament, you can eat at Red Lobster. Assuming you like the food. And assuming you can afford it. But the point is, the whole thing, including the Ten Commandments, was dumped and replaced by the new law. You're not under law, you're under, you're in the grace now. We went through that, right? Well, here's Jesus talking about it in a parable. He says, Matthew, uh, Mark 2, No man sews a piece of new cloth on an old garment. Now, he would never use this parable today, would he? No. Because now, if you've got holes in your jeans and strange patches all over your body and the clothes, you're con considered chick. See, you got to have a pretty high IQ to even come here. Okay. But anyway, this did work then because they would not wear clothes that ripped to shreds and they would not patch old stuff on new stuff, right? They didn't have Amazon. The new piece that fills it up takes away from the old. And the schism, schisma, 
where we get our English word schism is worse than it was before you started to fix it. It tears around the new piece. The old piece tears and it looks worse. It says no man puts new wine into glass old worn out uh, bottles. Ascos is a leather skin. You see those? No, you haven't. A lot of times they were made out of stomachs of animals, right? They took the guts out of a goat or something, and then they dried it out, sewed it back together. There was a made a hose on this end, a hole up at the top of that, right? Then they filled it with water, wine, different things. And askos is leather skins. But new wine, kainos is the Greek word there, it means freshly made wine, not, not rejuvenated old wine. Fresh wine, see? The New Testament is fresh wine. The Old Testament would, would be old wine. Hence, Old Testament. See, see the play on words? This, this gets better. The fresh bottles burst the old skins. Okay. So he says the wine spilled, the bottles marked. New wine, Holy Ghost, New Testament, must be put in. Renewed, new man, vessels. See it? The Pharisees and scribes couldn't leave the old. See? And then we went through again at the seminar how the Messianic Jews were corrupting the gospel by trying to drag circumcision and other things into the fresh wine. See? That's what people are looking for is fresh wine. He's talking about the new covenant and the moving of the spirit in the Old Testament You couldn't have the Holy Spirit. He would come upon you. You would do your task and he would leave you now You can take him home with you He lives here See you don't go to the temple anymore. You is the temple honey You is the temple of God You are fresh new Wine. Some of you look like uh, broken down old refrigerators, but listen, looks <laughs> looks are not important to the Holy Ghost. Man looks on the outward to God, he looks on the heart. He doesn't care what you look like, he's looking in there, inside. Yes, sir. And there they are. <clears throat> they were, you know. Made out of animal stomachs and stuff like that. These are big uh, wine skins, probably used at, at weddings or at a party or something of that nature. And they would go around. Here's the vent pipe. There's the you plug this up and then you go to the cup, cup, cup. Fill it up like that. <clears throat> Jesus said, "Listen, to get a fresh wine." You need a fresh, fresh wine skin. Okay? You can't put put fresh wine wine in an old testament wine skin. It doesn't work. Boom, it blows up. Jesus told another parable, parable, the parable of his incredible power over the devil. <clears throat> now this part's rather odd. Because in eternity, of course, he had total and complete power over Satan as God Almighty. <clears throat> but the Bible teaches that he <clears throat> excuse me, emptied himself to become what? Yes, a human. Representing the biggest drag in history. Can you imagine going from being God to a human being? It doesn't 
ever suck worse than that <clears throat> Seeing the desperate love God had for humans that a that God himself the concept of it is gaspingly asinine It's ridiculous beyond anything you've ever heard This is absurdity gone wild God Became like me you got to be kidding. I can't wait to not be like me <laughs> God Almighty he emptied himself it says to save our souls emptied of what his omniscience He wasn't everywhere at once anymore. He was walking around like I do Going to the bathroom like I do drinking and eating like I do what a drag. His omnipotence. Out. He was no longer controlling the universe. He became a human. Like, like you. Omniscience. He was no longer all-knowing. He would ask questions of people. What's up, dude? Because he didn't know what was up. He had to ask you. That was quite a change to say the least But what he was showing here is our potential power over Satan That was the point He was showing the devil that a human being could kick his from here to New Jersey <laughs> And kicking somebody from here to New Jersey. That's a long kick because nobody wants to go to New Jersey <laughs> He was illustrating what a human could do filled with the Holy Ghost So he the Savior fought the devil on the devil's terms The other way it was no contest Who can stand? Against Jehovah obviously nobody have a, wouldn't have a ghost of a chance in hell, but becoming a man now that's a different story. The devil thought he had him. You're a human. Psst, I kick. I ate humans for lunch. Oh, but wait a minute. He was illustrating for us what could happen if you got filled with the Holy Ghost, if you surrendered your life completely to God. What would your life be like if you truly repented? What would happen to you? He was illustrating it because it happened to him. He emptied himself and was filled with the Holy Ghost when John the Baptist baptized him. Yeah, we can't relate to God for obvious reasons, but when he became a man, we could certainly relate to him because he had all the same crap we do. He got tired. He had B.O. He had to take a bath. He had to go to the bathroom. He Worked 12 hours then he had this he had the rest everything was human Mark chapter 3 the scribes came from Jerusalem. They said wait a minute We've been seeing him perform all these miracles and casting out these demons now deliverance back then was extremely important because there was no deliverance there never was any once you picked up demons in the Old Testament you kept them for the rest of your life if you picked up superpowered lust demons and you became a homosexual there wasn't any possible way for you to be cured so in the Sodom and Gomorrah incident They had to be eliminated There wasn't any way to send Jonah there to preach against sexual perversion because They were all infected with demons They couldn't get healed, but in Mark chapter 1 it happened It actually happened and nobody could believe it then 
he met the guy Chuck full of spirits he started yelling in the service and when somebody had demons back then they sent them to an exorcist and then they sent them through different methods of exorcism some used potions some used oils some chanted some had you say prayers some sang. you went through this routine rituals deliverance ritual still going on today Orthodox Church Roman Catholicism they have rituals they run you through kind of like hoops bang this demon flew out of that guy based on God's word nobody could believe their eyes <sighs> you gotta be kidding what was he there he was making a statement a there's a new sheriff in town B this new sheriff is gonna kick the other one's face in on a human level not the God level come on the demon flew out of that guy in Mark chapter 1 it was the first deliverance anybody had ever seen no rituals no forms no oils no singing no special clothing boom out they said we've never seen it in this fashion before wow that's amazing well the Pharisees and the scribes and so on you can imagine were very jealous very jealous same thing today uh, if you're successful in some area of Christianity somebody's gonna be jealous of you it just comes with the territory they're gonna badmouth you they're gonna try to bring you down to their level so they will nitpick you and criticize you most of the time people that are criticizing you they're actually jealous of you it isn't personal it's their insecurity well, the scribes and Pharisees say, "Hey, wait, wait a minute. This is this is a con job. These demons are coming out because he, Jesus Christ, he's the prince of the demons. He's the ruler of the demons. The Greek word is archon. So they tried to tie him into that and show that it was a scam. Scam. Lots of scams now, Christianity." He said by the prince of the devils archon the ruler of the demons is the Greek word That's how he casts them out. So then Jesus responded with an illustration He said how can Satan cast out Ekbalo means to throw out Satan if a kingdom divided against itself It won't, it won't make it Not going to survive. What's he talking about there? Oh, America. No, he's not talking about America, but I'm just saying we are have entered our season of division here in this country, for example. All countries go through it. It's happened all over the world. Now it's our time. Everybody's going to split. Group, 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 group. This group hates that one. This one hates that one. This one hates that one. It's happening right now. And it's going to get much worse. Are we going to be able to stand? I doubt it. In the book of Revelation, the Antichrist comes after the nation of Israel, and we are not there to help them. What happened to us? I'm guessing we didn't stand. We didn't make it. I'm guessing. I don't know that for sure. If a house divided against itself, you get a what? We call it divorce. The family splits, correct? Duh. He's using a simple third grade example to illustrate why he does not have demons and he is Satan's enemy. If Satan rises up against himself, what's going to happen? Same thing. No man can enter a strong man's house and Yaparzo toss the joint. You know how to toss the joint? Thank God nobody raised their hands, but <laughs> criminals come into your house when you're not uh, there and they toss your house looking for valuables. And they don't gently open the drawer. Okay? They're throwing drawers open when something valuable flies. They reach over and pick it up. They've all got good backs. 
<laughs> well, spoiling means to go in and take the valuables out of your house, which the other strong man wants to keep. That's what he really wants. If you come into a strong man house and take the garbage out, he'll thank you. But if you come in looking to take his valuables, you're going to get punched right in your face. But if a stronger, stronger man than him comes in and does what? First, before he spoils the house, he binds the strong man. Deo means to chain up or tie up. Anybody ever been in jail? Don't don't raise your hand. I looking out looks like several actually, but what happens? They bind you up before they take you to jail. Yes, sir. I read that in a book. You gotta bind up the devil. That's why we teach we teach so much repentance here. That's why we teach renewing of the mind here. Because you can't get rid of the devil if you are feeding him at the same time. It becomes the Hatfields and the McCoys. Nobody ever wins. They just keep shooting at each other. It's not going to work. Okay? You must bind. Chain him up. Then you can casually walk around the house and take whatever you want. You don't have to toss the joint. You can just, almost like skating on Christmas, skate over. There's the jewels. There's the money box. Skate over there. Why? He's bound. He can't do anything about it. Because a stronger one than him came in and bound him. A weaker one coming in, no chance. Oh, what's the illustration here? Well, it's clear. God now a human is binding Satan's incredible power through the Holy Ghost, through holy, sanctified living, through a personal relationship with God. He was bound. Every time you stop sinning in one area, you're another step closer to throttling the devil. Every time you change your mind and stop listening to demons, every thought, every sentence you kill, you're one step closer to spoiling his house. You just skate on through there. You pick up the goods. There's the money. There's the family portraits. You might as well use those for target practice. Grab the money. Yes, sir. You walk out with the cash, and it's no problem. If you don't bind the strong man first, and then you try to get him out of there, oh, man, you in it. You're in a world of hurt. That's going to be a long night for you. And it's not going to work. Then he will spoil the house. These are great scriptures. First John chapter 3. He that commits sin is of the devil. Let's clarify that. Poieo in, in that text there is written in the present continuous tense. So that means someone that practices sin. It doesn't mean someone that sins once in a while. Everybody sins. Nobody's sinless. At least that I've ever met. Didn't get one amen, so we got a lot of holy rollers here tonight. Anyway, there is nobody sinless that I know of. Put it that way. So I sin, you sin. That's not what it's talking about. It's talking about someone who's practicing sinning as part of their life. No one who practices sinning. That person's of the devil. Does that make sense? For the devil sinned from the beginning. For this purpose was the Son of God manifested that he might. Oh, here we go again. Luo, Luo, unchain the works of the devil. 
what are those works? Well, that's a debatable subject. People argue over it, but the Bible is pretty clear over it. Sinning, sin is the work of the devil. Sicknesses, diseases. God never gives you a sickness or disease. Mental illness, uh, poverty. Run down the list. There's too much, way too much to even list for the devil. It runs off the page by the hour. All of it, it says, all the works of Satan can be loosed. You can say anyone can be set free. It says that is the purpose of the Son of God. That was his purpose in coming here was to unchain, unloose the works of the devil. What works? Any works. Any kind of work. Powerful. Hebrews 2, as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, so did he. That's what I was illustrating earlier. God became a man, and he emptied out himself to do it. God could never be a man and still be omniscient. Because there ain't no omniscient human beings. Now, there's several people I've met over the year, years who think they're omniscient. Uh, some of them have been wives. But anyway, God had to empty himself of these incredible divine attributes to be a human being. And so he became a partaker of flesh and blood, like us. How? That through his death as a human, he might what? destroy the Kratos is the dominion he had death is a dominion Satan runs and operates he's the it's his kingdom death handed to him by Adam history's greatest imbecile Adam handed the devil Kratos the dominion of death and he runs it like nothing you've ever seen. Oh, he kills like, oh, it's unbelievable. Disease, sicknesses, wars. Oh, death is a specialty. But that dominion was destroyed. Why? So we could be delivered from the fear of death. Because we were all in our lifetime subject to the slavery of dying. I just went back to Kansas to see my dad. He's got two forms of cancer. He's 91. Sat with him at his bedside for hours. He's at the uh, VA facility in Wichita. Went through all the Bible studies. We had prayer and so on. He's ready to go. He can't wait to go. Uh, he's praying that he dies soon. Why? He no longer fears dying. People that are without hope, without the Holy Ghost, fear, fear death. Because for them, the dominion of death has not been destroyed. I'm watching television one night and I'm watching this TV show on James Brown. The James Brown, this guy was super talented man, singing and dancing off the hook. Um, I guess he started rock and roll or something. This guy was like spectacular. Good, great singer, great everything. He got real sick one day and they took him in the hospital and he kept getting sicker and they couldn't stop it. And the physicians couldn't, couldn't figure out what was going on. He kept getting sicker and sicker and sicker and he slipped into a coma. And uh, his relatives are there. They said, hey, there's something's gone wrong here. He's going to die. They come visit him. And he's laying there in a coma, been in it for a couple of days. And suddenly he sits up in bed, in a coma, screaming at the top of his lungs, I'm burning. I'm burning. I'm, stop this fire. Put this fire out. I'm burning. Help me. I'm burning. Flopped back down in bed, dead. Wow. 
Let me tell you something. You don't have the Holy Ghost. Death is a frightening experience. God became a man to destroy Satan's domination of your death. You need to feel it no more. Because death to a born again Christian with the Holy Ghost is the beginning, not the end. Your life really starts after your death. Mark 3. Very, verily I say to you, all sins shall be forgiven to the sons of men. Blasphemies, wherever they blaspheme. He that blasphemes against the Holy Spirit has never forgiveness. But it is in danger of what? Eternal judgment. That's what it says in the Greek. What's going on here? They said Jesus had demons and that he was casting out demons through Satan. But they knew he wasn't. You cannot blaspheme something if you don't understand it. If you see a church and you drive by and go, oh, that place is a dump. And you don't know anything about that church and you don't go to church and it means nothing to you. That's not blasphemy. You have to know what you're doing for it to be a sin to you. You have to understand what you're doing. If you're drunk, you're coked out of your mind, uh, you're mentally ill, and you say, you know, to you, Jesus, That's covered by grace. You can be saved. You have to know what you're doing and understand the truth for it to be a sin. Okay? For example, the Apostle Paul was a serial killer, 1 Timothy chapter 1. I was before a blasphemer. I was a persecutor. I was injurious, but I obtained mercy because I did it in unbelief. The Greek word blasphemia means to desecrate something sacred. But if you don't know it's sacred, it's forgivable sin. But if you know what you're doing and you blaspheme Jehovah, that's a forgivable sin. All blasphemy is forgivable. Except one. Except one blasphemy. All the others are forgivable. Yeah, I told you that story. I did that years ago. I pulled over my car, so frustrated with God. I got out in the middle of a field, probably a cornfield. And I looked up at God, because I figured he was up there. Man, I let him have it. Well, I'll tell you what, I, I straightened him out quick. I thought I was... Oh, I, I'm sure he was reeling after that exchange. And after I was done, I was panting. I cussed him. I yelled at him. I questioned him. Why this? Why that? Oh, I just went nuts. And uh, after that, nothing changed. And it, <laughs> but I was forgiven for that later because I was ignorant okay. so if you know somebody who's blasphemed 
God or Jesus or they were drunk or on coke or whatever all that stuff's forgivable if you're not in your right mind and you're doing something that's not that's forgivable Okay. Oh, what about this one? Let's go on the the number one parable of it of them all. Ready? Jesus said this is the most important parable. So you must understand this parable before you leave tonight. Jesus began to teach by the seaside, and a great multitude he entered a ship and sat on the sea, which he was doing what? Yeah, and using his loudspeaker. You know, your voice kind of travels over water better than a, a giant multitude. Plus, he didn't want to get crushed. They're standing on the seesaw listening to him, and he taught them in parables. What was he teaching them? His doctrine. He wasn't just entertaining them. Behold, there went out a sower to sow. It came to pass he sowed some fell by the adus, fell on the road. And the fowls of the air devoured it up. Okay? Just like that you throw the seed on the ground and uh, the birds come and get it I think my wife went home didn't she all oh, good now we get this dog and my wife decides uh, we have a rock backyard in Sun City you know everything's rock out there so she decides that the new puppy is going to want to need some grass to go pee pee on. Pee pee. I said, oh, well, now I'm getting a sinking feeling in my stomach because I, I sense I'm getting drawn into something. Oh, no. I'm talking to the husbands right now. They know exactly what I'm talking about. <clears throat> the wife comes up with an idea and you start to sweat. <laughs> So she wants this section of the gravel taken out and wants it planted in rye grass. Okay. So to make a long story short, Home Depoting, digging, Rocky, we <laughs> sow the seed. There it is. Putting down the rye grass, you know. My green thumbs sprouting. Put some mulch down. After the landscaper told me I'd put the wrong kind in before, so I got the other kind. As soon as we finish the fiasco, I mean the the uh, yard. I go in the house and I look out through the picture window, and doves. <laughs> All over the place And I'm thinking to myself. I hope I hope she doesn't see that Two minutes later Mike <laughs> Those of you who are married when you hear your name called in a certain tone There's more activity in your life coming down the pike very shortly <laughs> We need to put newspapers on that. Newspapers. <laughs> My wife does not drink. <laughs> so I don't know. I don't think that I don't think yeah, we <laughs> put newspapers over. Keep the birds off. Oh, we got this down. I go to the bathroom, I come back out, look out the window. The birds are tearing through the paper. <laughs> the seed goes out, God's word. And if it lands on bad ground, uh, bad ground was the point of the story Keep listening Even if you throw bad seed, God's word in church It falls on bad ground. Did you know that? Eating away 
some fell on stony ground It didn't have that much earth immediately it sprang up and When the Sun came up Scorched it it had no root died Just like that the seed comes up. There's no It burns right Verse 7 some fell among thorns thorns grew up Choked it out no fruit Just like that Others fell on good ground Yielding fruit that sprang up and it sprang up at different levels and produced different levels of fruit There's different kinds of grounds in your church okay. There's a stony ground there's a roadside There's thorny ground, but there's some good ground in your church and that word is the same Same word same word same word different ground The ground determines what Happens with the word. You got to be kidding. That's God's word you're talking about. I am, but God's word is useless depending on the type of ground it falls on. The Bible is useless. The Bible is essentially worthless. How do you know that? Mormons read the Bible. They're not saved. Job witnesses. They have the Bible. They even created their own Bible. They liked it so much. They're not saved. Catholics have a Bible. Every the seed in the story, I know it seems like the seed was the point of the story. Actually, you flipped it. It was the ground. The seed fell on that was the point of the story Ah, That makes so much sense Why because you know yourself and you know other Christians and you know Everybody has different ground And the good ground the ones that have good grounds they produce fruit at different rates Some Christians grasp the Word of God. They go with it. They produce lots of fruit. Other Christians just piecemeal it in once in a while, struggling along in life, producing a little fruit here and there, but usually fizzling out. The ground it falls on determines what happens to the Word. The sower goes out to throw seed. It falls on different grounds. The disciples came to Jesus and said, what are you talking about? Jesus gives them a loving, scolding thing like he normally did. You don't understand that parable? You're not going to understand any of the other parables if you don't get this parable. This is the main parable. He says, the sower sows God's holy word. Some are thrown, sowed on the ground. The road out in the road Some of them were covered by newspapers When they heard Satan what <clears throat> Here you see the power of demons in our society Way beyond the knowledge of 99% of all Christians. They have no idea How permeated society is with demons They have no idea Satan comes immediately and steals the word. Where was it? Floating around the air? No. It was in it went in the person. It went inside the person. My God, how can that be? This sounds like science fiction. It's not, it's spiritual. It's spiritual. You've worked with 
hundreds of people over the years who you have given them the truth a b c so simple couldn't be any simple the next day can't remember a thing you said to them why it was stolen out of their heart by a spirit some fall on stony grounds okay these people get saved they're excited they have their first love they receive it with gladness oh the word of god yes but the thing never takes root so what happens to them well they run into some tough times they fold up like an accordion they collapse Tough times comes to every Christian. One hundred percent of them. One hundred percent have tough times. The word didn't make it. Some throw among thorns. It says the word, of, holy word of God, and guess what happens? Merimnah. The anxiety of this I own age anxiety why did we put those newspapers down there my wife had some anxiety about the birds eating all those bird seed so she sat down might have gone on the internet <clears throat> probably read a manual from Harvard and came up with an idea to put newspapers over the yeah. yeah I called the Arizona Landscaping Association and volunteered to be a guest speaker at their next meeting after I learned that technique because I'm sure I'll I mean, I'm booming now What happens? Listen to this carefully. Your life is explained right here. The anxiety of this age. What is that? Life. Our life has anxiety. Just living is an anxiety producing event. Being alive. Nobody gets out of it. Everybody has anxiety. A pate is the Greek word for a delusion. The delusion of riches people think if they've got enough money and they've got X amount of money saved they have a great career they got a spectacular retirement blah 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 they'll be safe and secure and it's a lie ask everybody in 2008 at the recession it's a delusion to put your faith in money and what the lusts of other things entered in and God's holy word choke out. See, the word of God never returns void, but it depends on the ground it falls on. In eternity, it's never void because the event where the word of God fell on the road and the devil took it immediately out of there. That's recorded in eternity for Judgment Day on what you did with that word. But in this life, it returns void all the time. In fact, this one was choked out. So what do we do around here? Well, it's a the usual. We try to get people to get delivered from anxiety and fear demons. We try to get them to Repent of lusting after things. We try to get them to stop watching Kenneth Copeland. <laughs> Figure out how to put a yacht in your yard. If you don't need a yacht, you're not taking it into eternity. You don't need a, I don't need a giant mansion to live in. Hello. That's all perverted word. That's not God's word. That's perversion of God's word. You don't need a bowling alley in your bedroom. <laughs> no offense. It chokes out God's word. So what we teach is 
this. We try to teach that. Jesus said, don't be anxious. Same Greek word, marimna. Don't be anxious about what you shall eat, what you shall wear, what you shall drink. Your heavenly Father knows you need all these things. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. All these things will simply be handed over to you. This, uh, this parable illustrates how powerful the word of God is and how subtle it is. Mark chapter 4. Jesus said, take heed what you hear. For with what measure you meet out, it will be measured back to you. Wow. This is a dangerous parable. God's telling you that you better be careful of how you hear things and what you listen to. Because you will sow what you reap and reap what you sow by listening to false words and lies. Ask any person who has a mental illness, their entire day from sunup to sundown is loaded with lies in their minds from spirits. It's all lies. It's all negative thoughts. It's chronic negativity in the mind. Be careful what you listen to. Be careful how you hear. Because you can hear truth and reject it. And you can hear lies and keep it. And you will have to live with it after you've done it. Check this out. To you that hear, more shall be given. Hear what? Truth. He that has, that person will be given more. If you receive truth or you receive gifts from God, if you keep on hearing truth, God keeps giving it to you. Yes. And you keep getting bigger and stronger. Amen. And it never ends. Conversely, the other is also true. If you keep listening to lies and receive negativity from Satan, he keeps pouring it on and giving you more and more of it. And in the end, what's going to happen to you? You not listening to truth will lose everything you have. Truth is a commodity that is a lifesaver. Eternally. Jesus said, so is the kingdom of God. Like a man should balo throw seed into the ground. He said. He should sleep, he rises, night and day. Translation, he goes through his normal routine. He's up during the day, he sleeps at night, day after day. But the seed, unbeknownst to him, starts to spring forward, spring up. He didn't do anything. Blastano means it germinates on its own. Sometimes when you share a word from God with somebody in at that moment nothing really happens But then later on The more they got to thinking about it day later week later what have you something kicks and It grows What's he trying to show us here the seed the word of God has life of its own it lives on its own. In my backyard, I have a section for the puppy that has is partially uh, filled with rye grass. <laughs> There's gaps here and there, <laughs> which causes our landscapers that come over. I don't do landscaping in my yard. I'm too old and too lazy, I, I hire somebody to do it. And I pay them with my wife's money. But what you do is they see our yard that we did and they smirk. They're running the blower. He looks over at the, <laughs> and he goes over here. And, you know, he can't believe that these crackers are uh, putting 
put a paper on the lung <laughs> bunch of crackers Yeah, that's right. But anyway, listen that seed even though we had Wall Street Journal and seeing it laying on top of it some of it Caught See some didn't catch there's there's gaps in the yard okay? and Now the puppy comes out looks at the yard runs over on the gravel to pee and The yard is a monument to human failure But the seed Unbeknownst to me and doing nothing to it started to go What do you say God's words like that? It'll grow in a place. You don't think it's going to grow It'll sprout somewhere. You don't think it's going to catch so just share the thing and wait for the word to grow because the word has life in itself. He do. He doesn't see how it works. I didn't see how that yard was going to work. I didn't think anything would come up. Yeah, when I saw the doves, there were no pigeons. It was all doves. Weird. I saw them. Some of them looked like they were reading something, but most of them were tearing through it like that and diving in. I didn't think any of the seed was going to come up. I didn't think one blade of grass was. I'd given up on it in my mind. I just walked out. And a few days later, I came back, and my goodness, there was a small little section. It had green rye. Rye is beautiful, isn't it? Bright green. It's better in Bermuda. That's crappy grass. This rye grass looks great if you plant it right. <laughs> I saw a small section over here with sprouts. See, it had a life of its own, and it made it past me, my wife, the newspapers, and the doves. Sometimes the word of God will come through Places you can't even believe that thing will come If I can get a couple patches of rye grass to come up God's word certainly will rise to the top Mark 4 the earth brings forth fruit of herself Automatos what does that mean? It's where we get our English word automatically yes what is he saying there? The Word of God has an automatic, life-containing feature on its own, apart from me. And the planet Earth is similar to the Word of God, he says. Instead of a seed, let me illustrate it with the planet. The planet has life in itself. I created the planet, Jesus said. I'm God. I made this planet, and that's how it works. It runs automatically. Yeah, we rotate around the sun automatically. We spin at a certain angle automatically. It all runs on its own. Amazing. I don't. Do, I have nothing to do with it. Thank God. First, the blade. This was Wigglesworth's favorite verse. Wigglesworth quoted this verse all the time. First the blade comes up That means it starts I Got a little patch here and there see Another week then another patch over here patch there Gaps here and there then some come up over there Then some come up in the rocks where we didn't plant it <laughs> Uh-huh coming up out of the rocks where I didn't want it Then the full corn comes out sometimes There's different people have different grounds Christians produce at different rates some produce an ear Some produce the full ear in the corn Some preserves a hundredfold some only 50 some 10 some almost one when the fruit is brought forth, it's time for the harvest. Hey, look, I know this sounds nuts, but 
Every little thing you do for God is being recorded on your account in heaven. The Holy Ghost records all that because he is omniscient. I'm not. He remembers everything you say and everything you do. Good and bad. Click, click. And even if you do the littlest thing for somebody, that's a teeny little seed that's put on your account in eternity, which you get a reward for, the Bible says. Everything you do for the Lord with a good heart is rewarded in eternity at the harvest. What harvest? The judgment seat of Christ, our harvest, the great white throne judgment, the harvest of the sinners. They run the sickle through and you go through the harvest. Everybody is going to get harvested, good or for bad. It also illustrates the Word of God, the seed. It's unusual growth. It grows in an odd pattern. What's Jesus saying there? You can't figure everything about God out. You can't know everything about God. You got to take most of it by faith. Jesus said, what should we like in the kingdom of God? How do you compare it? Well, it's like a grain of mustard seed when it's sown in the earth. It is one of the smallest little seeds. This rye seed was like that big. It was long, like a stick. And when I got the bag of rye, I didn't know how to plant it. So I'm reading the instructions. And the bags, when you read an instruction on a bag, you're holding it, it some of it falls down, then it squinches, and then you got to look up. Pretty soon you decide you know how to do it anyway, just by osmosis. And so I'm taking it like this. Doing like that. Oh, landscaper saw me. He's busting a gut laughing at me, then comes over. Senior Smith. Yes. Give me that, you idiot. He's taking out big scoops like this, see? And later on, I knew what he was doing, uh, feeding doves. <laughs> but a mustard seed's even smaller than a rye See, That thing's tiny, man. And he says, you put it in the ground, it grows on its own. And it becomes greater than all the other plants. This thing becomes huge. And it, sh it has... Huge branches, and it says the fowls of the air lodge under it. And fowls is an interesting interpretation. These are fowls, they're like tares. And the church all over the world is full of fowls, they're everywhere. Some are here tonight. People that are backslidden Christians. False teachers, false prof prophets, false this, fake that. All that stuff is mixed in with the real believers. That's why Jesus said in the judgment of the nations when he comes back, the angels go around and they separate. Yeah, you got sheep, goats, but right now they're all in the same pen. At the end, they're all separated. And these are the fowls. I didn't want to go through all this. This would take another hour. But these scriptures illustrate the types of fowls that the Bible talks about. And fowls or birds are, are uh, likened to spirits, demons, in some of the text. It says, Mark chapter 4, with many such parables, he spoke the word as they were able to hear. Yes. So, I have counseled many people over the years, baby Christians, 
veteran Christians ministers TV preachers mega church pastors People not even saved. I've had everything come into my office every any kind of a person has gone in and seen me and if it's a person that doesn't know anything or is mentally ill or extremely confused what I do is I do exactly what that says I just share with them something that they're able to receive at that moment so sometimes I even have to uh, make it like a B C with them <clears throat> and sometimes I have to go over it a second time a B C then I go over it a third time a B C because they're not able to hear XYZ translation there's different ground and each ground produces fruit at its own rate every person is different ground some get choked out some grow up among thorns and they fizzle out when the heat comes up they the pressure of temptations and the devil jumps on them they burn up they collapse not everyone is able to receive truth at the same rate everybody's different so when you share with somebody you've got to be able to adjust yourself accordingly like a chameleon like a circus juggler you got to be able to kind of fit yourself with that person or you're not going to be able to help them if you talk over their head or you talk down to them they're going to get confused or offended and then you're not going to be able to help somebody and that's the purpose of your life you're supposed to be helping people this on. When they were alone, he told them all these things to his disciples. See, you are now alone, you are not part of the masses, and God does not speak to you in parables. He talks to you when you're alone, he talks to you plainly because you are a born again Christian, you have the Holy Ghost. You're not like the crowd, you are to receive truth. Straightforward and you're just receive it bluntly and truthfully and then you are to change your life immediately when you receive that truth That's how the system works What is spiritual defilement now here's this one's interesting mark 7 Jesus said listen to me everyone and understand nothing from outside of you exothen Externally entering me can spiritually defile me. Crack. Coke. Booze. Oh, it's the No, we're talking about spiritual defilement here, not physical defilement. Those other things can defile you physically. Yes, they're not good for you. Correct. And I mean these these doves were not happy when they came down and said, what are you putting this paper over the some of them were hacked We got to scrape through the paper to get the seat Some of them got mad and never came back The things which come out of you Coin will profane you Coin is profane profanity what comes out of you spiritually defiles you. Criticizing others, yelling and screaming, cursing and swearing, nitpicking others, losing your temper, raging. That is spiritually defiling you. Eating Twinkies and bonbons cannot defile you. Now, it's not, I'm not telling you to go. Go get a big box and knock it off tonight. No, I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that. 
I'm talking about spiritual defilement here. He's talking about spiritually. You can't eat anything that will spiritually defile you. See, under the old covenant, you could had dietary restrictions. The new covenant, there are you just pray over it and sanctify it with God's word, and you're good to go. Now it may not be healthy for you physically, but it's not spiritually defiling. But when he entered into the house from the people, his disciples asked him about that parable. And Jesus gave him another little gentle scolding lesson. Are you without understanding also? And obviously the answer was, of course they are. They don't know what they're doing. Do you not perceive no ale? Are you not thinking clearly? Some people who cannot receive the word of God, you have to slow it down and repeat yourself sometimes. Maybe you got to say it twice. A third time. Because some people are not thinking clearly. Their mind is on something else. They're not focusing. Are you guys not thinking clearly? Whatever is outside your body enters into you cannot defile you spiritually because it doesn't go into your heart. What's the heart mean here? Yeah, your inner man. He's talking spiritual here. He's not physically talking about your actual heart. But it goes into your belly and then goes into the draw, right? After dome. What's that? That's that's a place where you have a bowel movement. A bathroom. I've been to Africa three times and I had no idea the beauty of a bathroom. You don't know. You don't understand. You don't get it. A bathroom. Almost, by the time I got back, almost a sanctuary. Because I had so many instances in Africa where I couldn't find a bathroom. You say, well, that's not that much of a problem, is it? It is when you have projectile diarrhea. <laughs> From eating foods your body's not used to. Which I stopped doing after the first meal. Oh, yes, I lost 18 pounds on the first trip to Ghana. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Brother Mike, here's something to eat. Have an enjoy yourself. Oh, thank you. Lord, get me out of this. So you kind of pick around on the plate. I'm not really that hungry. I'm kind of stuffed. I ate earlier. You did. I, oh, this guy's lying. Sometimes I had to use the woods. Sometimes you just. I mean, it was tough. tough. When I got back home, I was so happy to see my toilet. <laughs> On my knees, hugging the tank. So you don't appreciate the little things in life till you don't have them anymore, as Grandpa used to say. And I didn't have a bathroom anymore. And listen, Jesus is saying, look, you eat something, it goes out. It's no big deal. But he said, that which comes out of you, out of you, defiles you. From, from within the person, within the person. Okay, you could be surrounded by sin. Okay, surrounded. If you ever go to Vegas, you go into the casino. You're surrounded by sin. Okay, surrounded by it, but that doesn't mean that sin's in you. Okay? In this world, we're surrounded by sin. You can't get away from it. Billboards, Circle K, everything. It's all around us that does not defile you as a person what comes out of you Jesus said is what what comes out of you is based on your thought life 
he says listen carefully Dialogus must means things you ponder and rehearse in your mind Okay, and if those things that you sit around thinking about are bad and then you speak them out you are spiritually defiled It starts with your thought life watch evil thoughts of what Jesus had the big 12 The first one is what thoughts about Adultery fornication murders theft covetousness greed material things uh, Wickedness perversions deceit Licentiousness what's that? That's per people who behave sensually okay? Cleavage uh, tight packing you're trying to present a sensual look see uh, When I was living in sin when I did that was at happy hour Every Friday. Oh, I gotta go to happy hour I'm Trying to find a love of my life at happy hour What a delusion I would have been better off had I gone home and started a yard <laughs> oh, Believably stupid The happy hour to find the love of your life. You got me out of your mind Which I was foolish thinking there. I was pride blasphemy Evil eye. That's all I did at happy hour. Scan this chick, scan that one, scan this one. Then we would comment on the girls. Oh, that one's got nice breasts. Oh, look at their legs. Oh, she's too fat. Oh, she's too short. You would the guys comment at happy hour. You know, and the more you drink, the more elaborate is the commentary. Lasciviousness. Everybody comes in dressing to attract looks. They want to look hot. Okay. Hot. Anybody here look hot? I'm glad you didn't raise your hand because we would have evaluated you. <laughs> and you're, the result of that would not have been very good for you. What's Jesus saying? Your thoughts generate this. And when you release it, you are spiritually defiled. All these evil things come from within and they koinato defile you. What's it look like in there? You look into the person and you see the thoughts and then you see what they express. They are connected. What the person is pondering on and focusing on, they say. Let's pray then. Father God, thank you for your parables. They were fabulous. Parables of Jesus man, there's something else Lord. Here's something else Father God tonight. There's a couple of people here who have been defiled and No one defiled them They defiled themselves They defiled themselves and it started with their thoughts Lustful thoughts were put into their mind by a lust demon and then the bad ground in their soul manifested. And they went back to click internet porn. Anger. Criticism of others. Saying negative things. Expressing self-pity. 
low self-esteem They say it and they profane themselves but their heart in their heart They don't want to profane themselves. They want to be pure and they want to be healed They don't want to hurt other people They don't want to hurt themselves That's their real desire in their heart But I pray tonight Lord I know that spirits can get into people's minds and cause them to focus on evil things. I know these spirits say evil things in their minds. They speak evil things to them. And the person doesn't catch it. They don't take that thought captive. They let that thought run through their mind. And then they eventually say something that defiles themselves when they speak out in frustration and anger and bitterness they speak it out and they want this process destroyed the bible says by renewing our minds these evil thoughts the person focusing on can be destroyed one after the other and the spirits that are in the brain and the body causing this person to profane themselves these spirits can be cast out evil thoughts about adultery pride covetousness thoughts about money material things lusts lust thoughts chronic fear thoughts these thoughts must be destroyed by the power of the Holy Spirit and God's holy word for the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword it pierces even through the dividing asunder of soul and spirit it pierces even through the joints and the marrow and the word of God is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart all things are naked and open before the eyes of whom we have to do therefore says the Lord let us come boldly before the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in times of need are you needy tonight and you need God to heal your mind have you profaned yourself and you need to be cleansed tonight so just raise your hand so I can pray for you if that falls into that category you saw that list that Jesus wrote there were 12 things on that list or 12 things and they started in your thought life your behaviors start in your mind father God you saw those hands right now in the name of Jesus we agreed together for this purpose was the Son of God manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil we bind your power we bind your power strong man strong man in the mind Strong man in the body, we bind you tonight in the name of Jesus. We bind you by the authority of the Word of God, the life giving power of God's Word. We bind your powers right now in every person that raised their hand. Every person that raised their hand, we bind you right now. We bind your power when a strong man guards his house, he keeps everything to himself. But when a stronger man comes along, he binds the strong man. He binds the strong man. Then, then he spoils his house. He spoils his house. Come out, spirit. We bind you right now in Jesus' holy name. We command you, spirit. We command you evil thoughts, profanity of the soul. Come out of there right now in the name of Jesus. We bind your power. 
We bind your negative thoughts. We bind your lies. Come out of that body right now. Come out of his head right this second. Come out of her head right now. Evil thoughts producing adultery thoughts, pride thoughts, covetous thoughts, rage thoughts, anger thoughts, taking offenses. You, you spirit, we bind your power right now in the name of Jesus Christ. We bind your power according to the word of God. We bind your power right now in the Jesus holy name. Put your hands right here on the side of your head there, right where your temple there. Put your hand right there. There it is, spirit. The, the spirit is usually in the frontal lobe of the brain, usually in the frontal lobe. Put your hand up there. There we go. The Bible says, these signs shall follow them that believe. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Mark chapter 16, you put your hands right on your head. You know that you have these evil thoughts. You don't want these thoughts. You don't like these thoughts. You want to get rid of these thoughts. You want to get rid of these thoughts. Come out right now in the name of Jesus. Come out. There they go. Come out right now. My ministry team is going to come right up to you and pray for you right now. Come on. Put your hands on your head. Come out of my head right this second. Come on out. Come on out right now. Come on out right now. Come out of there. Get out of my head right this second. Right now. Out. Come out right now. Evil thoughts. Adulteries. Fornications. Covetousness. Pride. Anger, arrogance, vanity. I bind your power. I bind your power. The strong man. The strong man. We're going to rout you tonight, strong man. I put my hands on my head and I command the spirit, a seducing spirit of evil thoughts. Come out of my head. Negative thoughts. Come out of my head. Fear thoughts. Come out of my head. Lying thoughts. Come on out right now. Lying thoughts. I command you. I command you, come out. Right this second. Come out. Right now. Come out right now. In the name of Jesus. Get out of my head. I command profane defilement. I command defilement. Come out of me. Defilement. Come out. Come out. Get out of my head. Get out of my head, I said. Come out. Come out in Jesus' mighty name. Out. Come out. Come out right now. Come out of that head. Come out of there. I defiled myself. I repent of it. I defiled myself. I repent of it. Come on. You put your hands right here. Right there. Say it. In the name of Jesus, come out. Say it. Out loud. There you go. Louder. Keep saying it. Come on. Good. There you go. Say it louder. Get out of my head. I said get out of my head. Come out. Get out of my head. Come out in Jesus' mighty name. Get out of my head. Defilement. Profanity. Come out in Jesus' mighty name. Out. Get out of that body right now. Come on. Let's go. Get out of there. Pride. Vanity. Arrogance. Lust. Let's go. Come out now. Come out right now. You go now. Worry and fear. Worry. Anxiety. Anxiety. Come out. Father God, forgive me. I'm bad ground. I'm bad ground. I got thorns in my life choking out the word of God. I repent of it. I'm bad ground, Lord. Help me. I'm on stony ground. I got no root. When trials and temptations come, I fail. I collapse like a mine shaft. I fall apart. I'm bad ground. I want to be good ground. I want to be good ground. And I'm going to take it tonight. I command bad ground to come out of me. Come out. Negative thoughts, come out. Hateful thoughts, come out. Revenge, come out. Revenge, come out. Lust, come out. Get out of my head. These signs shall follow them that believe. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Get out of my head. Evil thoughts. 
Get out of my hand right now. Go. Go. Get out of my head now. Come on. Come on. You're bad ground. God has called you to be good ground. You've been called to be good ground. Good ground. You are called to be a producer. Some 30, some 60, some 100. Come on. Fighting. Get out of my head. Come out now, I said. Come out right now, I said. Hurry up. Out. Come on. You two. You two. Put your hands on your body right where your pain is. Where's your pain at? Where's your pain? Right where your pain is. Put your hand there. You are not going to be bad ground anymore. You're not going to be stony ground. Thorny ground. No. You are going to be a producer. A producer of the Word of God. I command these evil thoughts. Out! Out! Get out of my head! Get out of my head! Right now, come out! Now! Come on! Self pity! Self pity! Self hatred! Self hatred! Get out of my head! <coughs> Get out of my head! Get out of my head! Self hatred! Insecurity! Insecurity! Come out! Come out of me! In the name of Jesus Christ! Evil thoughts! Get out of my head! Come on, you God hater! Come out of there! Come out of there, you God hater! Come out of there! Come on, scream at him. Scream. Yell louder. Get out of my head. Come out of my head now. Go in Jesus' name. Come out of my head. Come on, yell. Yell. Get out. Say it. Get out of my head. Get out, I said. Come out. Get out of my head. Go. Get out of my head. Satan, lose your hold. Satan, lose your hold. Come on. Let's go. When a strong man guards his house, his goods are safe. But when a stronger man, tonight you are the strong man. You got the Holy Ghost. You got God's word. You go in to the strong man's house and spoil his goods. You go in and strip the devil from your mind. Strip that sickness from your body. Come on. Get out of my head. Come out right now. Hurry up. Come on out. Come out of there quicker. Come out faster. Come out quicker. Come out right now. Quicker. There it is. Come on out quicker. Come out quicker. Quickly. Come out quickly. Satan, lose your hold. Come out of her. Come out of her body. Come out. Arthritis. Fibro. Come out of the body. Hurry up. Go. There it comes. Go. Come on out. Just repent of it. Go. Get out of there. Come out right now. Right now. Come out now. Quickly. Come out quickly. Every evil thought. I said, come out. Every evil thought. Drugs. Lust. Drugs. Out. Prescription drugs. Out. Come out, Satan. Get out of my head. Come out of my head. Go. Fear. 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 Come out. Fear. 
Anxiety, come on out. Right now. Anxiety, come out. Anxiety, come out. Right now. Come on. Anxiety, I command you. Get out of my head. Failures. Failure. Regrets. Failure. Out. Out. What's going on here? So you had brain surgery, right? That's why Connie said she's had brain surgery and part of her brain taken out, so she's got a lot of trauma. trauma. She came from a real dysfunctional family. Oh. Who, who hurt you? A lot of people. Was it your dad? What did he do to you? He would beat me. He would beat me. Physically beat you? He did a lot. He did kind of all of it. Did he molest you? What was his name? Javier. Javier. Okay, close your eyes. Take a big breath. Breathe. Come on. Breathe. Breathe. Father, in the name of Jesus, we forgive Javier tonight. We forgive him. We forgive Javier tonight. Is he still alive? We ask you to hunt him down tonight and touch him and forgive him and his daughter and tell him his daughter is forgiving him tonight. I forgive him. Say it. And I release him from my soul. I release my dad from my soul. And all his spirits. All the demons my dad transferred into me. I release sexual perversion. I release child molestation. I release it out now. In the name of Jesus. I command this spirit to come out. Come out. I command my dad's spirits to come out right now. Right now, I forgive my dad. I forgive my dad. And I want his perversion spirits out of me. Come on out. Javier, come out. Javier, come out. Come on out. Come out. Every demon from my dad, come out of there. Every spirit, every abuser, I forgive all of them. I forgive them all. All the abusers. I'm going to let your tears go. Come on. Don't hold back. You're holding back. Just release. Come on. Release. Let your tears. There it comes. Here it comes. The demons are going to get ready to come out. Here they come. Let your tears go. Let your tears go. Okay. Just, just, just do what I tell you. I want my dad's demons out of me right now. Right now, I want this child abuse out of me right now. Come on. There it is. There it comes. Keep coughing. There, keep coughing. They're coming out now. Keep coughing. There they come. Come out. Keep coughing. Keep coughing. They're coming out right now. Come on out. Every demon, go. Here they come. Come out of her stomach. Come out. There they come. Come on out. Come out. Come out. Come here. Come out. Come out. Keep coughing. Keep coughing. Come out. Come out right there. It goes in the name of Jesus. Come out. Here they come in the name of Jesus. There they come. Come out in the name of Jesus. Keep going. Every abuser. Everyone. There they come. Brain heal. Brain heal. Come out, devil. Come out of my stomach. Come out of my groin. Come out of my vagina. Come out of my body. Right now. Come out. 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 Come out. Yeah. Keep coughing. Here they come. Controller. Come out. Controller. Come out. Here he comes. 
Here they come. Yeah, they're coming out. Keep going. Glory to God. There they come. Glory to God. Glory to God. Come out. Come out. Come out of her back. Come out of her hips. Right now. Come out. Come out. Go. Adultery and fornication. Come out. Evil thoughts. Come out. Come out. There they come. Thank you, Jesus. Keep going. Every spirit, come out. Every child abuser. Every beating. Physical abuse. Perversion, come out. Come on out. There it comes. There they come. They're coming out now. Glory to God. Come on. Come on. Come on. What are you thinking about tonight? Mental illness. Hmm? Mental illness. Yeah. What are the demons saying? What are they telling you? I'll answer the question this way. I have racing thoughts. I yeah. can't what are they saying? They just, they're all over the place. My mind is racing. What's the main thought? Um, and I can't concentrate. I talk to myself uncontrollably. That's the main issue. Talk yeah. to myself uncontrollably. Okay, now, I need you to listen to me. Okay, that's not the main issue. That's a symptom. That's the symptom. Right? There's a root to every symptom. Okay? Now, you're able to think on your own, are you? Good. Now, there, that demon in your forehead here raises your mind. He's doing it. He's doing it. And you're okay with it. What I need you to do is turn on him and hate him. I need you to get the gift of hate. Because right now you don't have it. And since you don't have it, he's just going to stay there and keep doing that. And then he's going to be blabbing out of your mouth all day long. Because she doesn't hate me. She's okay with me being here. Jesus said you cannot serve two masters. You must hate one of them. I'm talking to that pervert. I'm talking to that pervert. I'm talking to that pervert. I command that pervert to lose her now. Go now. Come out of the Do you hate him? Come out of the genitals. Come out of the womb right now. Go! How do you act when you hate something? Let her go. Let her go. You sit there like that, chewing gum, smiling? I don't think so. You get mad. You turn on it. Remember your brother? You hated your brother. You didn't sit there smiling, chewing gum with your brother. You did bad things to him. You went after him. Correct? Do that to him. And you'll be free. Spirit, I hate your guts. I hate you. Come on, sweetheart. Let your tears go. Don't hold back anything tonight. You're supposed to be healed tonight. Your brain's going to get healed tonight. Heal. Every abuser, you got to forgive every one of them. Let's forgive them. Come on. Have the hour. Who's the next one? Cassandra. Cassandra? Okay, go ahead and pray for her. Cassandra. Just ask God to forgive her. Come on, Cassandra. Come on. Cassandra, I forgive you. I forgive you. I forgive you. I want all the spirits of abuse from Cassandra out of me. Go. There they, here they come. There's Cassandra. There she is. Cassandra, come out. Every spirit from Cassandra, go. Go. Cassandra, go. Come out. Come on, Cassandra, go. Cassandra, come out. Come on. Who's the next one? Who's the next one? Who's the next one? Marcus. Marcus. Go ahead and pray for him. Pray for him. Ask God to forgive him. 
Tell the Lord you forgive Marcus. I, Marcus, I forgive you for what you've done to me. Everything you've done to me, I forgive you. I want all Marcus's spirits out of me. Go. Come out of my stomach right now. Marcus, there he comes. Here comes Marcus. Keep going. Come out, Marcus. Go. Every one of them, come out. Come on. Fight harder. Come on out. He's not doing what he's told. Come on. Who's the next one? The next one. Come on, sweetheart. The next one. Let's go. Who's the next one? Monica. Okay, go ahead. Tell the Lord. Ask the Lord to forgive her. And you, you tell her you forgive her. You pray for her. Go ahead. Monica, I forgive you. I release you. Satan, I hate your guts. I hate you. You make me talk uncontrollably. I'm not doing that. You're doing it. I hate you for that. I repent of listening to him. I repent of doing what he tells me to do. I repent of it, Lord. Help me. Help me. I hate you. Satan, I hate you. Come on. Come on, Monica. Get Monica out of there. Go. At a girl. Satan, come out. Brothers, I can see like the spirit of discerning of spirits, but for myself, I'm having trouble seeing like what I'm feeling. Well, what happened? The problem is you got these demons in your head. They're in your forehead, and they're super smart. And uh, she has the same problem you do. She has racing thoughts, overthinking, racing thoughts. Click, 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 and that spirit dominates you. He does the same thing to that lady. It's a seducing spirit. It's in your brain. And he runs your mind a mile a minute. It runs like a racehorse. Okay? So, like I told her, you have to focus on him and hate him and get him out of there. You can't get him out if you don't hate him. See, that's what I'm trying to get her to do. I'm trying to get... He has the same problem you do. He's yeah. got a spirit in his forehead, yeah. and it causes his mind to race a thousand miles a minute. And then he talks. He talks like, cuck, 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 cuck. see, and people listen to him talk. They think he's crazy because he talks all the time. And that same spirit does that to her. She talks. At times, he makes her talk to herself all the time. See, and the only way to get him out of there is to hate him. See, and she's smiling. She doesn't hate him. You're smiling. You don't hate him. So you can ask God to give you the gift of hate. Yes, and he can give it to you because Jesus used the gift when he cleaned out the temple. He took a, a, a whip in there and drove everybody out. He didn't go in there smiling. He was steamed. But it was righteous indignation. Okay. Why don't you both just sit down there? Here, have a seat. Ready? Close your eyes. You put your hand on your forehead there. There you go. Father God, you see these two saints? They want to serve you and they want to follow your word. And and but they they can't do it because they got a spirit in their brain. They can't serve you right because they got a spirit. And every time they try to serve you, it goes bad. Because it's a demon telling them godly things. It's a devil telling them godly things. Why don't you go witness to this person? Why don't you go do that? Why don't you? It's all a lie. Now, spirit, in the name of Jesus, I decided I hate your guts. I want you out of my head. Right now, get out of there. Come out. Come out. Come out. Get out. Get out. Come out of my head. The demon of racing thoughts. Mind control spirit. Mind control spirit. Come out. Come out. Right now. Right now. Come out in Jesus' name. Get out in Jesus' mighty name. I command you to go. Go now. Get out of my head. Get out. All right. Get out. All the way. All right. Let's trick him now. Are you ready? 
You're going to command that one to come out. Ready? In the name of Jesus Christ. Come out of it. Get out of it. Come out of her. Come out of her in Jesus' name. I command you, Spirit. Get out. Get out of that man of God. Get out of that woman of God. Come out. Did you get any hatred for him while you were doing that? Hate for him? You know it's a person living in there. It's not a thing. It's a person. Right? It's a demonic spirit. Yeah, he's a person. They have their own mind and their own will. That's a person. That chair doesn't have that. The chair doesn't have a mind. It can't talk. It's this person living in your head. And how many years of your life has he wasted? How many years have you wasted? How many? It started happening like when I was around 11. 11. When I was 19, it got worse. Right. And then the worst it was like about four years ago. Four years ago. Yeah. He's had that. Satan, come out now. Uh, YouTubers, listen to me. You cannot go light on the devil. You got to be, you got to get nasty. <laughs> you got to get mean. See, you got to get mean. It's like that Clint Eastwood movie. He said you got to those ranchers. He said you got to get mad dog mean. You got to get nasty. Hey, this guy has the same thing. Have a seat there. He has a spirit in his brain right there. These two have the exact same thing you do. They have a spirit in the brain that takes over their thoughts and their minds race like a speed bag in the gym. See? And the only way to get that kind of spirit out is to get the gift of hate. You have to hate him. And it's hard to hate them because they kind of blend into your personality. They're hard to hate. It feels, it feels like it's you, exactly. Exactly, it's all a lie. You hear that? Exactly right. That's exactly right. But it's a delusion, see? It's not you. You don't want to sit around talking to yourself. That The real you doesn't like that. It's not you. He, when he starts talking, it goes a mile a minute. Blah, 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 blah. Everybody's looking at him and goes, this guy's crazy. So they all run the other direction. He's not crazy. It's the spirit in his head that's crazy. You got to hit it. Hit him with hate. Try it. Lord Jesus, give me the gift of hate for this monster in my brain. Please help me. God, I can't live with this anymore. I can't live with the spirit in my brain. I can't control my thoughts. I can't, I can't control how I talk. I defile myself all the time because of what I say. That's what Jesus said tonight. I saw it in Brother Mike's Bible study. It was right there. What comes out of me defiles me. Not what I eat. Not what goes into me. That does not defile me. My big fat mouth defiles me. And my mouth is controlled by a spirit. I want the spirit out now. I said I hate him. I hate him. I hate him in the name of Jesus Christ. Listen, hate. Hate keeps a man alive. Hate is a good thing. If it's for the devil and sin, hate is a good thing. Thus saith the Lord, you are to hate evil. Jesus said you cannot serve two masters. You must hate one of them. You got to hate what the devil done to you and your family. Hate what he's done to you and the kids. You got to hate him. Everything about him. You got to hate him. Everything, the thoughts, his words, his sickness, his disease, anger and bitterness and lust and porn. You got to hate it. Because of what you don't hate, you will do again. Listen to me, streamers. If you don't hate it, you will repeat it. You will repeat it. You will not repeat something you hate. If you truly hate it, 
You will not repeat it. Come on. You got to have hate for sin and Satan. Hey, what's going on here? This guy keeps putting, he's obsessed with me for three years. This guy, Charlie Wall. Tony? I worked in nursing and, and I went and helped did deliver nurse? some people. Huh. And he hates that. He's been hiring like three, four people to voodoo on me and I'm attacked every oh, hour. Oh, okay. Come on over here. Okay. Come on. Come on. Yeah. Okay. I'm not of the evil. I hate evil. Yeah, now, uh, let me ask you, where'd you get that uh -huh. at? Oh, I got this out. from a Christian. I got this. Why? I got this from a Christian store. Okay. Why? What's, what's this? Yucky? Huh? Where Where'd you get these at? These Christian. This one. I think I got at the gem show. What? Gem show. But gem. this one was what's given that? to me. You see yuck on this one? This one's crystal. Ah, that no good. Okay. <laughs> I was given to me. Yeah, okay, now, <clears throat> when you were young, were you a very attractive girl? And uh, were men attracted to you? Now, when you was a kid, did you get abused or mistreated? Yes. What happened? I I was always I always prayed to God like so even though I was adopted I didn't really get the love I needed I was always getting in trouble you're stupid and this that and but I always had to give you know I always prayed to God all did the either time. your parents hurt you yeah emotionally were they verbally hard on you yeah was your mother a nitpicker critical yes. types okay what was her name Linda she's still alive my dad passed away already he's dead all right close your eyes there hold on a minute you got gum yes <laughs> All right. What was your mother's name again? Linda. Linda. Okay. Close your eyes there. Take a big breath. Big breath. There we go. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Close your eyes. Take a big breath. Father, uh, do you see this beautiful woman standing here? She was verbally abused as a child, and her mother drove a stake right through her heart. And she picked up a rebellion spirit when she was young, because she was so hurt by her mother. Her soul, right in here, was hurt bad. She began to disobey and rebel, and then she went into promiscuity. The devil brought her demon-infected men, and they used her body for uh, orgasms, and they mistreated her. They used her for sex, but they did not truly love her. And she opened her body and her soul to these men and spirits transferred in. And now these spirits from her childhood and from these bad men are, draw, are allowing voodoo curses to land on her from some guy. He's doing voodoo. He's a stalker. And her spirits from her mother, Linda, must come out tonight in the name of Jesus. And we must completely forgive Linda. We have to forgive her. There it is. Let your tears go. There it is. That's the Holy Ghost. Close your eyes. He's coming on you right now. Linda, in the name of Jesus. We forgive you for what you've done to your girl. We forgive you tonight. Let your tears go. Don't hold back. We forgive you tonight for what you did to your daughter, Linda. We forgive you, sweetheart. Right now, in the name of Jesus, we command all of your spirits to come out of your daughter. Right now, come out of her throat. There he is. Here he comes. Here he comes. Here he comes. You're right there. Linda, come out of her. Linda, hold that. She's coming up. Here she comes. Come out. Linda, come out. Witchcraft, come out. Voodoo. There it is. Keep coughing. Come on. There it comes. Keep coughing. Go, go. Here it comes. Linda, come out of there. Linda, come out. Linda, come out. 
oral sex come out of her mouth oral sex come on there it comes right there come on it there he comes glory to God there it comes Linda lose your hold of your daughter lose your hold of your daughter lose your hold of her glory to God glory to God I forgive my mother I forgive her I'll release her I forgive my mother I release her I forgive my mother hallelujah I forgive my mother Every ugly man must come out tonight. All of them. Come on. Every ugly man. There it comes. There it comes. Glory. Keep coughing. Keep coughing. Don't stop. Keep going. Come on. There it comes. Glory to God. Come out. Come on out. Come on. Come on. Keep going. Just do what Valerie tells you. Come out right now. Do everything Valerie tells you. Come out in Jesus' name. Every ugly man, oral sex, anal sex, adultery, group sex, rape, everybody that raped her. Come out. Rape, come out. Rape. Here he comes. Fear from rape. Fear from rape. Get out of the body. Come out of her throat. Come on out. Rape. Fear. Go in Jesus' mighty name. Come on out. There it is. There it goes. Streamers, the devil's getting routed tonight. He's getting routed. Listen, good ground. Good ground is the Christian who wants to get their demons out of their body. That's good ground. If you let spirit stay in your body, that's not good ground. You're bad ground. You're bad ground. Come out, Pastor. Yeah, Come out, quick right there. Get out of there, you demon of insanity. Get out. Stupidity, insanity. Come out. Come out in Jesus' mighty name. Get out of that body right now. Good ground is ground that wants the demons out. If you're willing to leave demons in your body, you are not good ground. You're not good ground. Defiling thoughts, defiling words, and keeping spirits in your body means that you are not good ground. You are to be good ground. God has called you to be good ground. That means the ground has to be plowed up. You have to be able to fight. You got to fight back. Fight. Paul said to Timothy, you must war a good warfare. If you're willing to let demons stay in your body, what's that saying about you as a person? What does it say about you if you're going to leave the demons in there? You know they're in there and you're not getting them out. Come on. Listen, you're the kind of person that wants the demons out. You want to be good ground. You can't just leave spirits in your head. You can't leave spirits in your body. You can't do it. You, you can't do it. If you do, they will take you. They will take you. Demons follow orders. Demons follow orders. Their orders are to destroy your life and rot your Christian life out. That's, that's what their orders are. Get in their head and keep them from serving God. That's exactly what they were told to do. Keep that person from becoming good ground. You have orders. You're following orders. Jesus said, through my word and my blood and my name, you are to drive that spirit out of your body. Out. That's what you're supposed to be doing. That is good ground. I know people have got demons and they had them for years and they're still struggling with it. That's bad ground. Listen, you got to get these spirits out. Period. Out. Period. Come on, who else haven't you forgiven? You got bad feelings about him. Your dad, what's his name? Howard. Go ahead and repent of it. God forgive me, Lord, for having bad feelings about Howard. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. 
joy and the peace. That demon just told you to pray for her. Can you believe that? Now that's an intelligent spirit. You see that? The demon just told him to pray for her. How do you know? Can you? Because you were. That way you weren't focusing on him. You were focusing on her. Can you believe that? A demon tells him to pray for another person so he won't attack him. He thought that was him. Don't you see that? He is completely gone. Thanks. I don't receive that. No, you're doing it, but you don't receive it. But you did receive it, and you did do it. I saw you do it. He was praying for somebody because that devil said, "Hey, why don't you pray for that person and don't focus on me?" And he did. He stopped focusing on that spirit in his brain, and he went over to pray for that girl. But I stopped focusing on the teacher's tire. Huh? I stopped focusing on the teachers. I'm tired. I've had enough for the night of it. Oh, I'm you're the, tired. I'm, I'm tired. Okay. Yeah. Well, he told her he's tired. He told you to pray for her. What's he going to tell him? I don't know, but it's coming in a minute. See, these brain demons have high IQs. Compared to them, you're retarded. You're a retard compared to him. They're so smart that may make us look like we're retarded. Are you going to be here tomorrow hmm? at the church here? What's up? Are you going to be here at the church tomorrow? No. Religious demons get in your head and they tell you to do Christian things. <laughs> and they just told you to pray for her. Oh my God. Now that's an intelligent demon. When will you be here again on Saturdays? When will you be here again on Saturdays? Uh, I'd have to look at my calendar. No, we do Saturdays. Right, so what's happening? Yeah, the demon will tell you anything. Oh, the demon will tell you anything get you to stop focusing on him. Anything, even if it's pray for somebody else. They don't care. As long as they get to stay in there. That's how. That's what you're dealing with. They're, they're geniuses. And they like Christian stuff. They like it. I know what you're thinking. I'm crazy. You think I'm crazy. That's a demon telling him I'm crazy. Unbelievable. It's a madhouse in the spirit world. Listen, if the devil gets you to leave him alone and go pray for somebody else, he's happy to have you do it. Get over there and pray for them. That way I get to stay here. Bingo. He does a lot of Christian things trying to win people to Christ and talk to them. It's all the it's all the demon in there. He's training him to be a evangelized so he'll stop focusing on him being in there. I'm not kidding. Can you do both? Hmm? Can you no, do both? you can't, because he's always there, gumming up the works. So you got to get rid of him before you can evangelize. Yeah, effectively, yes, absolutely, correct. It's exactly correct, because he's always gumming up the works. He'll tell you to go witness to somebody, and then you start talking to him, and it blows up. They either get mad or don't receive it, or it goes bad. No, seriously, it happens all the time. I'm not even joking. I wonder why I'm not like fully effective. Like I'm not fully effective when I try to minister. That's why he's he's helping you minister. See, when the demons talk to Jesus and they complimented him, he wouldn't receive it. You're the son of God. Shut up. He didn't want anything from from spirits, but he doesn't do that. He, this demon tells him to do some Christian thing, and he goes and does it. Meaning he's, he's obeying him. But what he hates is him doing what he was doing earlier, yelling at him, get out of my head. That he hates. That bothers him. Because he's afraid you're going to come so, after him. That's so powerful and it has so many layers. Yeah. I can, I can only take so much of it at a time. I can only do it bit by bit because I can't do it. Okay, well then you do it bit by bit, but you got to keep doing it. That's why I'm asking if you're here on Saturday to come you're, back. You're able to do it. I am, and I just see you. Because I saw you doing it. You're able to do it even better, so that's why I want to Yeah, you can, you can do it. 
You can do it. He can do it too. Hey, if you get a religious thought in your head, flush it down the stool. And just flush it down the stool. Hey, why don't you go bless that person? No! Get out of my head. Demons love Christianity. They preach all the time. Exactly. That's religious demon. What? Right. Exactly. See, if if he's doing that stuff, he's not focusing on his main enemy. This guy right there. Bang. It's a distraction. It's a distraction. I know that sounds crazy, but demons like Christianity. They use it all the time against the Christian. I've seen it a million times. They get you off on some religious activity and off of them. I'd do it too if I was a demon. Wouldn't you? That's a great distraction. Well, hey, my name's Mike. Nice to I'm meet Mike, you. I'm Matt. Matt, nice to meet you. Hi, sweetheart. Up and out, she said. Yes, sir. Up and out. Up and out. Up and out. Now, get out of my body right now. YouTubers, I'll be back next Friday with another odd or unusual teaching. Don't forget about the website, hardcorechristianity.com. Go to the website and hit the teaching button the teaching button hit the button whoops and then go down to the uh, article Satan's counterattack read the other article how Satan controls the mind because you will be hit within 48 hours of this service they're gonna try and steal your victory all right I'll see you next next Friday at 7 p.m. Don't forget about the seminar this month. Ladies only healing night, February 22nd. It's usually our best seminar of the year. A powerful move of the Holy Ghost. We'll put them in in the small sanctuary. God's going to move miraculously. See you next time.